Okay, so we're back uh, with uh, more on building our peat and pole uh, wing. Uh, it's an air camper. So today we're going to talk a little bit about glues and um, how to get them mixed thoroughly and correctly and how we apply them. We're going to talk also a little bit about uh, the application and securing of our gusset plates. So let's get started. So what we're using is a uh, aircraft uh, structural epoxy adhesive. It's a two-part adhesive. Uh, T88 is it, as it's commonly uh, referred to. And uh, <clears throat> the way we mix it is to uh, use a little digital scale and we'll set our mode to ounces. You can see that we've cut the bottom off of a Coke can. Uh, makes a great little mixing bowl and uh, allows us to get the glue thoroughly mixed. It cleans up easily and uh, we can get three or four ribs out of one of those before we have to chunk it. Okay, so we're going to hit the tear function and zero the scale out. And we're going to start loading this dude up. And uh, we're normally using a little less than half an ounce uh, of glue total uh, for one side of a rib. So we put in part A. And now for part B. <clears throat> One of the reasons we do it this way is that we want to be very, very uh, precise uh, with regard to the amount uh, of each uh, component that we put in. Uh, it's supposed to be a 50-50 uh, mixture. And uh, for the glue to have its maximum uh, strength, uh, we need to adhere to that. Okay, so that's uh, overshot. So now I gotta go back and add a little more of this. Okay, so that's gonna get us in the ballpark. All right, so we're going to take our uh, little stirring stick, and we're going to start to mix this up. One of the great things about this little can bottom is that it allows you to get right up against the edges and draw down any uh, unmixed glue into the, to the mixture there. And uh, you notice that part A was a clear, pretty clear color, and uh, part B was a more of an amber color. So we want to mix this until we have uh, a homogeneous color and we want to mix it very very thoroughly in order to uh, get the best adhesion and strength properties. Okay so now that we got this uh, mixed up pretty good we want to take it over to our rib and start putting some uh, glue on here. Okay so we're going to start with the nose of the rib and beginning applying our glue. One of the cardinal rules is that you don't want to have any dry spots. No dry spots. Uh, and uh, I, my philosophy is that I would rather use too much glue uh, than is really necessary uh, and avoid dry spots than, uh, than to be stingy with it and have dry spots because dry spots are weak spots so get that in there I don't know if you can see that we've got a little squeeze out there which is what you want so what I've been doing is I just uh, will take the squeeze out from the previous part that I glued in and I will use it to begin applying to the next piece And just using a little, using a little metal scale here. It's flexible, and it's flat, and it gets right in there. And makes a great little uh, glue spatula. And once again, you see some squeeze out there. If you don't see the squeeze out, you know you didn't have enough glue. This T88 is uh, a very strong product. Did some tests on it, 
and glued up some of this uh, spruce scrap pieces that I had and uh, let it cure overnight and the uh, I tested the joints and they all failed uh, but the glue didn't fail it was the uh, oh, put glue in the wrong place while I'm talking uh, the wood grains came apart before the glue failed which is what I would have expected there okay so now in the interest of time I'm going to show you how we uh, go about our our gusset plates and we'll start up here again now the peat and pole calls for making your uh, gusset plates out of uh, 1 16th inch aircraft grade plywood and this happens to be birch and uh, very easy to work with. So I am applying, you'll notice, really an excess of glue here. And the reason is, is because uh, I'm not applying glue to the gusset plate. I think, uh, looks like if I did that, I would have really way too much glue on this. And so I tested this method out. So I put too much glue on the, the part, and then I just wiggle it down, press it down, and uh, did that on a, a number of pieces and then pulled it back off and uh, sure enough they were all thoroughly wetted so I felt pretty confident about using that method. Now you'll notice that uh, we're using some round gusset plates here and uh, the plans call for more of a rectangular gusset plate but we uh, several guys are doing this method now and uh, what we did was we just uh, went to Home Depot got a uh, I think it's like an inch and a quarter uh, by metal hole saw and uh, stuck it on our uh, uh, drill press and made a quick little fixture for it. it took about five minutes to do it and uh, you can crank these things out with with great speed and so we did that the disadvantage is is that they come out you know a little on the rough side a little bit hairy so we just took the uh, took them over to the uh, narrow belt sander and just uh, kind of touched up the back spun them around like that and you know in a couple of seconds you, you got something that looks like that and then if you notice the line uh, that I have uh, here. I just made a little template and that helps me to line up the uh, uh, gusset plate on the cap strip. Okay, so we're just going to do a few here in the interest of time. Okay, and I'm looking uh, on these pieces as well for squeeze out, and if I don't see it, then I'm going to go back and add a little more glue because I didn't get enough. So we get those dudes centered up. Now, uh, the traditional method of, of securing these would be to uh, use some brass nails. We tried that, it turned out to be really hard to do. Uh, so my friend at uh, FlyCorvair.com, William Wynn, suggested that I go and purchase one of these. So this is a uh, duo fast uh, staple gun and we are using uh, quarter inch by quarter inch stainless steel staples. And uh, so here's how they go get our gusset plate lined up like we want it, apply a little pressure, and it's that quick and that simple. If we were doing the brass nails, I, I wouldn't even get been started on the first one yet, so this is far faster, and this is not actually done for structural strength, it's done for clamping force to uh, allow the, the uh, epoxy to cure. Now, we calculated the weight of these staples uh, throughout the whole uh, wing structure and decided that the weight penalty for leaving them in was not very significant. 
uh, and also we have stainless steel staples so we don't uh, have anything to fear about rust there. You can still use regular steel staples if you want but you'll have to pull them back out which many builders do uh, so you have to devise a method that, that does not allow the staple uh, to countersink like that so that they can be easily pulled out because you don't want rusting uh, staples uh, degrading your wood. So that is how we secure these guys. Now let me unplug this for safety's sake. Um, we would normally continue right down the line with our gluing and uh, we would do that uh, with all the internal pieces here before we did any gusset plates. We glue up all the internal pieces then we come back and do our gusset plates and we staple them down um, and then after afterwards we will use a uh, chisel to come and very gently lift the uh, rib out of the fixture. You want to try to do it very gently and do it incrementally so that it stays level um, and if you do that it doesn't torque your joints they don't come out uh, of, of position very badly at all so what that enables us to do and it's one of the reasons we decided to use the staples was so that we can remove this from the jig immediately turn it over and then apply our glue and gusset plates uh, to the other side staple it down and that whole process takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 minutes for one rib. So now instead of waiting you know a whole day for one rib to cure this is actually our third or fourth rib today. So uh, because of our schedule we have to uh, build when we can and uh, that's the way that we've decided to do that. So um, let me show you real quick the, uh, in case you're interested, the model of staple gun and the staples that we're using. So let me grab that real quick. Okay, you can get a shot right here of the uh, model of staple gun. It's a model 3118, 3 8 crown stapler. The staples that we're using are 3108 CSS, both of those dual fast products. And uh, there are a number of companies online that uh, are selling these products. I think uh, between the staples and the, the staple gun, probably don't have much more than 160 bucks, something like that. So uh, well worth the investment and uh, lifetime tool there. So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's how we're uh, doing our glue and our gusset plates. So I hope that's helpful to you. If you have any suggestions or comments, please, uh, please let us know. Uh, until then, happy building.